Drupal and Gatsby can be deployed together on a single multi-app project on platform.sh. You can set up Drupal to act as a headless CMS, allowing Gatsby to pull articles from Drupal's JSON API during its build, separating the concerns of the front-end development team and those in charge of content. Additionally, you can leverage platform.sh's configuration to set up development environments complete with Gatsby's live preview feature, giving you previews of content changes instantly, all within the same project. In this demo, we'll first briefly cover Gatsby, the basics of its configuration, and deploy it on platform.sh. Then we'll take a look at configuring multiple application containers on a single project by adding a Drupal 8 site to our virtual cluster. All that's left then is to configure Gatsby to pull content from the backend Drupal container using the Drupal source plugin before we finally enable live preview on a development environment. Gatsby is a React-based static site generator written for Node.js. It provides a templating system for dynamically generating and styling single and list pages of content and provides intelligent imports that only require JavaScript and style sheets on the pages that actually need them. The source subdirectory contains our articles list page template, which will ultimately be used for listing all of our Drupal articles as well as an article.js template for each individual article. Gatsby Node.js is responsible for creating these individual pages, and Gatsby config.js provides metadata about our site. At the end of this demo, this will be where we configure our relationship to the backend Drupal app. So first off, let's deploy a basic Gatsby application on platform.sh. Here I have an empty repository locally, that's got its remote on GitHub and an integration set up to a project on platform.sh. I'm going to first create a new branch called Gatsby, and on that branch, use the Gatsby CLI to create the starter default app. When that's finished installing, I can run the server locally with the command Gatsby develop. And here's my site running locally. To get this running on platform.sh, I'll need to create three configuration files. Gatsby won't need any services, but I'll need to create an empty services YAML file. I'll need a roots.yaml file to tell platform.sh how to handle requests, in this case directing them to an application called Gatsby. Finally, inside this Gatsby subdirectory, I'll need a .platform.app.yaml file to define the app container's builds and deploys. In this file, we'll define the app name Gatsby, and that we want to use Node.js 14 as our runtime. Our build hook will build the Gatsby site into a public subdirectory, which we will then direct traffic to at runtime. We'll commit and push these to the branch on GitHub, and once we open a pull request, the integration will trigger a new development environment to deploy our code. Here we can see our Gatsby site on that environment. Looks good, so let's merge that into master. Next up, we'll want to use platform.sh's ability to configure multiple application containers in our cluster to add a Drupal 8 site to our project. We've already created our services YAML and roots YAML files, which will be shared by all of our apps. We'll just need to create a separate Drupal subdirectory with its own platform app YAML file. Later on, we'll be able to define relationships that will connect the two, but let's just deploy Drupal 8 to start off. We'll create a new branch called Drupal and then clone our Drupal 8 template project into a subdirectory. The template will already have defined services for MariaDB and Redis, so we can copy those over into our existing services YAML file. The same goes for our roots. We can copy into the project's roots YAML file, update the name of the app to Drupal, and delete the .platform subdirectory from the template. All traffic to Drupal will go through a new backend subdomain.
Drupal's platform app YAML is already configured. We'll just need to update the name to match our roots. Once again, we'll push these changes to GitHub and view them on the new environment. Our Gatsby site looks the same, and at our backend subdomain, we're ready to install Drupal. Before we merge our changes or go through the Drupal installation, we're going to want to add a few modules with Composer. Path Auto will make it easier for us to match the locations of our articles in Drupal with how they will be accessible from Gatsby. JSON API Extras will help us configure our endpoint on Drupal, and Gatsby will allow us to enable the Live Preview feature later on in this demo. We'll push those updates, merge, and then we can visit our production Drupal backend site on master and finish the installation. Now that it's installed, let's set up Path Auto. We'll install the module and then go to our configuration to set up an alias for our articles. We'll add a new pattern for content, which will create an alias for each article under Articles, followed by a slug of the article's title. This will be the same pattern each article will be found at on Gatsby as well. Now that that's done, we can create a few articles. Here I have two articles, each with an image, a summary, and some body text. You can see in the URL that our alias has been applied. All right, we've got a project with a Gatsby app and a Drupal app. Now let's connect them so we can start seeing our Drupal content on our Gatsby site. In Gatsby, we can define a service that will be pulled in during its builds by including a source plugin package for that source in its gatsby-config.js file. In our case, we're going to use Gatsby source Drupal to pull our Drupal articles. During our Gatsby build, Gatsby will place a GraphQL query against our Drupal app to retrieve our articles, creating a bit of a trade-off for our site. Our builds will be a little longer because of this step, but when deployed, we'll have static rendered HTML client side. This eliminates the need to place separate requests to each article when they are viewed, resulting in a much faster experience for our visitors, such as the headless way with Gatsby. So let's install and configure our source plugin and start pulling content from Drupal on our project. We're on a new branch called Connect where we'll first need to install the source plugin Gatsby Source Drupal. Then, we can add its configuration to the plugins attribute of our Gatsby config.js file. We're going to use the default JSON API as our API base, but we need to define a new base URL we're going to pull content from. For now, we can set this to our production Drupal backend URL. While we're here, let's enable our JSON API endpoint on Drupal. Now that we're configured to start making requests to Drupal, we need to add a few files to our Gatsby project to actually do something with that data. We'll first add a template file for our list of articles in Pages. This file will list all of our Drupal articles according to the GraphQL query All Node Article displaying its title, image, and summary pulled from that query. Next, we'll add a link to our homepage so that we can get to this list page. Then we'll add a template for individual articles in a new template subdirectory. This file will place a similar query to the list page, instead getting information about an individual article for that page. Finally, we need to set up a Gatsby node.js so that it will actually generate the individual pages for each Drupal article. It will make the same query as our list page and create a page for each article with the article template at the path we set up from our alias. With everything configured, we can run Gatsby develop locally and test it out. We have our home page and our articles list page. 
as well as pages for each one of them. Now, we don't want to just pull content from our production backend, but from the backend app from each development environment on platform.sh. We can use Platform's Configuration Reader Library for Node.js to pull information about our Drupal container and use it to dynamically define the base URL attribute on each environment. We'll load a config object to a variable and then assign the backend URL for the current branch to backend root using the relationship for Drupal. In order to use it, we'll need to go back to our platform app YAML file and define that relationship, giving the Gatsby container access to the Drupal container. Additionally, we'll need to add two more things to this file. First, during the build hook, the Drupal container won't be available, so we need to delay Gatsby's build until the post-deploy hook when it is. Second, during the build hook, we had write access to the file system, but in post-deploy, we will not. To get around this, we'll need to define writable mounts for our cache and public subdirectories. We can commit and push these changes, now giving us content pulled from Drupal on every environment of our project. The last feature we're going to add to our project is Live Preview, which will give us instant previews of content changes on our development environments, without requiring a full redeploy. When we run Gatsby Develop locally, along with defining a variable called Enable Gatsby Refresh Endpoint, our Gatsby site exposes an underscore underscore refresh endpoint. We can post to this endpoint and cause Gatsby to refresh its data taken from Drupal. We can install the Gatsby Live Preview module on our Drupal site, which will tie updates to individual articles to this post request, resulting in a rebuild of the Gatsby site each time an edit is published. We're going to want to keep our current configuration on our production site, master, while enabling this feature on our development environments. So let's do that. First, let's add the environment variable that enables the endpoint. On platform.sh, one way we can do this is by adding a .environment file to the Gatsby app. Each of the changes we're going to make to enable Live Preview are going to leverage the environment variable platform branch so that we can maintain our current behavior on our production site, master, but have Live Preview available to us on all of our development environments. Next, we're going to make similar changes to how our app is built and deployed. We want to run a full build on master, but no other environment, so we can add a post-deploy script that only runs it on master. We can then add a start command script that will run the Gatsby develop environment on non-production environments. We can then update our platform app YAML file to use these scripts and then commit and push to GitHub. When it has finished deploying, we'll want to go to our Drupal site and add the Gatsby Instant Preview and Incremental Builds module. Then we can configure it to use our front end Gatsby app. First, with the URL itself for our preview server and second with the refresh endpoint itself. Now when we go to one of our articles, we can make a change to the body text, save and publish the changes, and then after a refresh, our front-end Gatsby site has refreshed its data and it's now previewing that update for us. Thank you so much for watching this demo. If you'd like to try it out yourself, you can find the code in our templates organization on GitHub at platformsh-templates in the Gatsby-Drupal repo. Take care and deploy Friday.